Hi, it's Martin, and welcome to another video on my Knit365 YouTube channel. Today's video is long requested by both you as the community folks and by Mark, I think. I have a project bag. <laughs> and uh, if you're interested, of course, it's a little grey girl rainbow theme. This is an extra large bag and it's got all of the wool for the project. And today's project video is a podette mini update special on Mark's jumper. <laughs> so this is probably my most requested work in progress. Whenever I do a monthly update and I talk about what I'm working on, people are always, where's Mark's jumper? And I don't know if it's for two reasons. Partly because you all love the jumper. And I mean, like, what's there not to love about this amazing Argyle? But also because you know I get so distracted by projects that I never end up working on this. So now you're all like Mark. Are you ever going to finish this jumper? Probably a bit of both. So um, I mentioned that I might do a mini podette about the jumper. Um... I don't know how long this is going to be. It's probably not going to be particularly long because I'm not sure there's a great deal to say, but I'll kind of talk a little bit about the sweater itself as a reminder for everybody, um, a little bit about the pattern, and then I might, um, a few people have asked about how I do intarsia knitting, um, and I might show a bit of that. So let's just recap very quickly. So the pattern is... The Argyle Sweater by Martin Story. The pattern is from the 1980s, I think. Um, it's from a pattern book that I was kindly lent by Jenny from my local yarn shop um, to make the pattern for Mark. So I'm working from an old-fashioned paper book, um, which is lovely, and... I've actually got a copy of it. I've taken a photo on my iPad that I can use to update the pattern. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, and it's a very simple tank top, front and back, um, no sleeves. It's just got a ribbon around the sleeves and it's got a V-neck. So it's actually quite quick to knit because there's no sleeves and it's just a front and a back. Um, the wool I'm using is by John Arban Textiles and this is their Alpaca Supreme Yarn. This is 40% superfine British alpaca, 40% organically farmed Falklands merino, and 20% A1 mulberry silk. And honestly, it is the squishiest, I think it's the squishiest yarn I've ever held or ever worked with, because it's alpaca, merino, and silk. Like, what, there's no roughage here. It's super lovely. And we've got... Um, a few different colours, so I think I might only have those two unwrap. Oh, no, hang on. I don't actually know how many colours it is. Three or four? I think it's three colours. So I've got this sort of darker grey, um, which is mid-steel grey. Then we've got this lighter grey, which is light steel grey. And then we've got porcelain white. So we have these three together. Um, Mark chose the colour and I'm sure this is part of his annoyance because Mark bought the wool as well. We were at Wonderwool Yarn Festival four years ago, five years ago. Yes, I know. You're all rolling your eyes at me. Mark bought the wool because he loved it and I said, yes, of course I can make it. But it was kind of one of those, I don't want to ruin the wool like at that point I, I've come on quite a lot in my knitting journey but at that point I don't think I was ready to make this jumper um so I didn't and yeah my progress though I've kind of got this far <laughs> this is the back and I think if I recall I need to get the actual pattern book out to work out how long the pattern is. This is going to be the back. And if I remember, I think I've got to do five full repeats and I'm just about to finish the second repeat. So when I finish this diamond here, 
that you can just see peeking through in the cream, then that's a second repeat. So I think that's one repeat to there. And I think it's five repeats. It might only be three repeats because five probably seems a bit long, doesn't it? Maybe it is three repeats and then I start the shoulder shape it. I think that sounds about right. Um, but it is this gorgeous argyle pattern and you can see where we've even got the crisscrosses and I'm knitting the crisscrosses as I'm going. A few people kind of said, why don't you just duplicate stitch it? That's not how the pattern is designed. And also because I, I've started it now, it's too late for me to, to change this now. So it is a bit slow going, um, albeit I'm only doing an extra small size for Mark. So that's basically it. That's how long each row is. So it's not particularly long. Um, but the reason why I stopped was because my brothers announced that they were having babies. So if you've been here for a while, um, sorry, I'm distracted. I don't know why I've got so many needles. It's on this needle and I've got, I don't know, random needles in my knitting bag. M maybe I do need them. I'm not sure. Um, I haven't worked on this for a year because I was making progress. I was checking in with it. I was doing a little bit every now and then. And then my brothers decided that they were both with child and obviously with wives and girlfriends. Um, and then I stopped knitting because it was about a year ago. So I think I then did my pride campaign in June last year when I made all my key rings. Then we got into July and I started knitting a few little baby things. And then it's like, I don't know, probably like September, October time. Then it was the West and it's mystery knit along. Then it was November doing more baby things because the babies were due in December. Then it was the Toft advent and, and you get my thought process. And there was always a thing and a reason why I didn't pick this back up. So it is currently Sunday, the 26th of June. I have the day in the flat and I'm going to see how far I can get on this. I've picked it up. Um, I'm obviously not going to show you the pattern, but I, I use my iPad. I've got a Apple Pencil. Yes. I was trying to work out what's called an eye pencil. No, an Apple Pencil. Um, and <laughs> I basically, I mean, you, you, can't, you can't see the pattern, but I then have a photo of it on my screen and I cross through it. So I wasn't sure if I had a paper pattern or an iPad pattern. So I found the pattern, which is a good thing. And according to this, I have another five rows to go before I do another increase. Um, so I'm going to try and find my place. The bit I need to sort out though, um, and I'll do a bit of footage later on about how I do my intagia, but I need to sort out the bird's nest, as I've affectionately called it, because Every time you see a different colour, it is an individual strand of yarn. So where you see here, we have this cream. This is one strand of yarn. And where you see this cream, this is another strand of yarn. So it's not like a fair isle pattern where you carry the yarns as you're going. It's all individual colours. Um, so again, this will be a separate bit of cream, separate bit of cream, and so on and so forth, which is what makes it look like this. And yes, you can all shriek. It is an absolute mess. But there's method in my madness because, yes, I've got a lot of ends to sew in, so if I pull the current yarns away, you kind of have these here, and it is quite cute actually, because you can see the reverse of the pattern in the, the yarn. So yes, I've got all these ends to sew in, but I'm okay with that. I can sew all those ends in at a time. Um, as I'm probably, I'm kind of a, a method knitter. So I'll probably knit the whole jumper and then I'll do all the ends in one go. But what, what I do is I have long lengths of yarn. So if I was doing a very simple intarsia pattern, I might have little bobbles um, or bobbins and um, you just wind the wool. You can get little plastic clips that hold them um, in place, but there are way too many strands on this. So I actually have just long lengths of yarn. And then what I find is as I'm going, if I get in a bit of a muddle, I can just grab a strand. It's in the ball 
or in the mess somewhere, but I can give it a shake and then the, uh, the strand comes free. So it helps me when it's all messy and tangled. So every couple of rows, I'll just stop and I'll quickly try and give it a shake, pull the strands free and off I go again. So for me, that is a, a really easy way to do intarsia. And that was a top tip from Jenny from my local yarn shop when I was getting in a bit of a muddle. Um, so yeah, so a bit of a longer introduction, but a bit of a, an introduction to the video, an update to the pattern, etc., cetera, et cetera. So as I said, it's Sunday the 26th of June. Um, I'm gonna spend, I'm not gonna spend the whole day working on this, I don't think, unless I get into a rhythm. I'm gonna give myself an hour. And I'm gonna see how many rows I can do in an hour um, of no distractions, no Instagram or whatever. Mark has just woken up, so we'll pop something on the tally have some coffee and then I'll see where I get to. Um, I would like to start a new project. <laughs> um, in June, Mark just said, of course you would from the background. Um, but I've just finished a cast off, so I feel like I, re I deserve a reward. But I don't know, I kind of like six o'clock on a Sunday is kind of like my time for starting new projects. I quite like a lazy Sunday evening. So I might knit on this throughout the day. And then if I can get, or oh, actually if I could get the pattern repeat finished, then I could award myself with a cast on, couldn't I? We'll see. But I'll check back in and I'll show you how I do my intarsia later on. I'll try and film a bit of footage and how I bring the yarns up and, and so forth. But I said, this is kind of just a little bit of a, a podette um, all about Mark's Argyle jumper. Maybe that's the, I think we've done one like this before. Issues with intarsia or problems with intarsia or something, but that could be the thumbnail. Um, so I'm gonna go and untangle my mess. I'm gonna double check where I am in the pattern by looking at the row below and checking this is what it is. So a little bit of a stock check. And I also need to work out why I've got so many needles. But I'll be back in a bit. I've just realized something, and I don't know how it's taken me this long to realize all these loose ends that I've got, I don't actually need them all because I'm only knitting with the top row of color. So all these loose ends is obviously where I've then like not had enough color to think I can finish a row. So I've added a new color in. So I'm carrying all this bird's nest for nothing. So I've given Mark the scissors and we are about to snip snip on anything that's not from this row up. So I kind of, I'll just hold it out. So like, right, that one there that's in use. But then there's one down here, like these aren't in use. So these could be cut shorter and it might make it a bit easier to hold. That's the plan. Snip, snip. I've dragged him in. Um, so these ones here are the ones that we're using, which means all of these I'm not using. I think it's just bad yarn management on my intarsia, but these are the ones that we need. I just cut the bottom off. I would just cut the bottoms off, yeah. Snippity snip. Don't snip me. Yeah, don't go any higher now because I'll need to. Yeah, that'll, that'll do. Right. That's so much better. Do you want to like snip some of these? No, 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 no. Because th these are the long ones that I'm using. Mm -hmm. Right. So if I bring this away, grab the bird's nest. So you've just snipped off how much? That much. Anyway, this is the type of <laughs> insight that you want. In the... No, don't, don't, don't do that, because I'm going to find out how long they are now. Because these ends, I could use. You just scrambled them in a ball. What's he doing? Um, I have just realised I've been working through the pattern, and it is, I think, five repeats to do the whole jumper. But when I get to three and a bit, I think it's like just over three and a half repeats done. Um, I then start the armhole shape in. So I'm just about 10 rows before finishing the whole second repeat. So once I've then done 
half of the third repeat, I'm going to start the shape in. I think that's something like that. Basically, I'm making really good progress. This is a positive message. So we snip snipped and I have liberated some little bits of fluff, which will now get used uh, as threads in the jumper. These bits are too little. Like, I can't do anything with that. Oh, actually, that one's not... No, they're all a bit short. Um, so, we've saved some long bits. <laughs> right, back to the jumper. So, for me, it's been a few months. Maybe? Weeks? For you, this is the next bit of the footage. Um, I've made a mistake on the jumper. It's currently in timeout. <laughs> It's currently <laughs> sitting by the door because I made a mistake. I was getting all hot and bothered. My hands were getting sweaty and the yarn, it just started to get all a bit hot and bothered. So the yarn is on the doorstep cooling down. I've took myself off to go and sit on the bed and have an ice lolly and put the fan on and cool myself down. And I'm now going to tackle trying to fix it. I think I know what I've done wrong. I think I've missed a stitch in a certain colour a few rows below. Which means that when I pulled my way back, I got the pattern out of sync. I'm so close to finishing the back as well. Right, I'm going to undo... Two rows. I'm not going to show you me undoing it. I'll just show you where I think the mistake is, if I think that's what I've done. But a good opportunity to dust the uh, the camera off for this blog again. So let's have a look. Okay, as if by magic, you've not had to see me undo it. I have found the problem. So I had basically, I'm missing a cream. So we have a cream here. This one here, this charcoal, should also be cream. So what I'd done is I quickly, or not quickly, but as I pulled my way back, I didn't see that not being cream. And I carried on in the light gray, I think, for one stitch too many. So what I need to do now is as I come back, because I'm about to, oh, actually, as I come back, because I'm about to pull a row, when I get to this stitch, I need to change him from a grey. Oh, no, actually, it's the light grey. It's this one here. If I flick it back around. It's this light grey one here. Because this light grey one should be cream to carry on the cream diamond. So what I'll need to do is I need to drop that stitch off and then create a pearl. A pearl? Create a cream on the pearl side. Um, so yeah. But we're making progress. Look, it's shaped. Um, I think I've got about 15 rows left to go. I need to have a quick measure because I've got to go until this measures uh, 14 centimetres, I think, from the armhole. Um, so I've still got a way to go. Um, but yeah. <sighs> it is, I should have said, it is Sunday the 28th of August, by the way. <laughs> Can it find to get this done in August? Um, but yeah. This naughty stitch. So it's been in time out, so I'm gonna try and fix it and then carry on with some knitting. I'll show you in a minute. Right, I'm having to confess this to Mark because usually what Mark doesn't see, Martin gets away with. But when I'm knitting in bed, we're watching telly and this is the rogue stitch and I can't place my tripod here. So what I'm gonna do is I've just pulled my way halfway and then I now need to fix this stitch. So this, grey here needs to become cream so I'm going to drop in there and I'm going to pick up that stitch so I'm going to pull that out and pull that little grey out 
somehow. There we go. Right, so I'll sort that end out later. And now I'm going to pick up the cream. And then switch that over. And that's become cream. Ta-da! And then that will just get pulled into shape later. So now, as I'm coming back... So I should have that one as a cream, which means this next one. Oh no, that one should have been cream on the right side. Right, that's fine. Oh, uh, uh, no, 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 right, that's right. So that one, that one was cream at that point. Right, so I've just finished that gray. So now that cream becomes <laughs> a right old mess. That cream becomes charcoal on the pearl side and then that charcoal becomes cream you're all looking at this now shrieking aren't you how complicated I've made this with all these ends but it's working for me so then that charcoal becomes cream and then we carry on with the charcoal And then if I just stop momentarily, and then if I give everything a little tug back here on my ends, and then I spin it around, there she is. And the cream line carries on. That stitch just needs, I can sort that out when I block it, but it's there, you can see the cream. It's just a little bit small. The pattern tells me that um, I've got to go from the shaping up nine inches. So I'm not going to finish this this weekend because I've still got a bit to go. So if it's nine inches on the shoulder shaping, that's about there, which I thought that was too long. So I asked Mark to grab another tank top that I'd made him so that we could compare. But actually doing this, and checking the size against a jumper that you know fits is a pretty good schematic. So I started the armhole shape in there, which is there. <laughs> I love when a plan comes together. So this is obviously me adapting the pattern and trying to make it as an extra small. And it seems to be, turn the bear around, uh, seems to be lining up. Um, but I said, it's kind of, August is end of August is coming and I wanted to get this finished um, but I'm not going to knit all of this tonight I just don't think that's possible I will keep going and I will see how far I get um, but I think I'm going to end up finishing August without casting the back off so we shall see but I just thought I would just show that because I think that's a, a pretty good um, fit if I compare this tank top to another tank top that I made in so, right, time to put the camera down. Keep going, more to go. Okay, it is. What date is it? I don't know. 17th. 17th of September. Me and the jumper are gonna have words. And it is my own fault. I need to undo the cast off. So. I finished all of the knitting. Yay! I've started to cast off, and I've cast off the neck and the top of the shoulder shaping. But what I'd forgotten, I didn't forget, because I knew that I was making an extra small, but the pattern only gives you a small. And I knew that I didn't need to follow, or I couldn't follow all of the pattern. He's opening crisps now. Wrestle the bag, go on, wrestle the bag. I knew I couldn't follow the small because following the small would mean I've got, I don't have enough stitches. So I knew I need to do something different, but we kind of did a bit of maths. Put them in the bowl, make a noise. I'm getting quite annoyed now. The dog's here as well. Loki. 
he's coming for respite. I might go to his house, it's weird, there's no knitting. Um, I knew that I would have to adapt the pattern. This is gonna be a bit of a rambling segment. I knew I had to adapt the pattern because I'm doing an extra small and I have overall 16 stitches less because I'm trying to take two inches of fabric out of the pattern. But in me doing some very quick and dirty maths, I've basically cast off and I don't have enough stitches in the neckline. So I've cast off and I've got too many on the shoulder and not enough on the neck. So we've now just spent no word of a lie. You know, sometimes people exaggerate, oh, it took me hours. It's taken about 45 minutes for me and Mark to literally go, I don't understand. <laughs> this is why I'm never going to be a pattern designer because it's really stressful grading patterns. But we've now worked out the maths. We now know what we need to do in order to get the neck hole correct. Because if I hadn't fixed this now, when I then finish and I put the ribbon on and he tries it on, the neckline's going to be like this big and he's not going to get his head through it. And if I'd done all of that and I'd then done the front and I'd sewn it up, I literally probably would just take a pair of scissors to it. So... We've now worked out the recipe. We've worked out how many stitches there are in the small, medium and large and what the grading is. So therefore, if we've got an extra small, what would we need to take off? So for example, if it says cast off eight, we're now going to cast off six, for example. Um, and we've now worked out the numbers and we've worked out, we've reverse engineered it. So we've worked out how many do we need the neckline to be? And then how many do we take off the shoulder? And I think we've got it. But what it does mean is I now need to undo the cast on. So I've my needles are bowing because I'm using bamboo needles because it's knit flat. Um, so I've just got my trusty higher hires out. I hadn't cast off the right side. I'd only cast off the left side. So I have put the bit that I hadn't cast off onto my high hires and then because they're higher higher sharps and there's what they say on the tin i need to undo the cast off row so i'm going to undo the cast off and then i can put that on the cable and then the only knitting i need to do is i need to undo five rows there which is fine because that's only like 14 stitches in total and then get back to the number of stitches which we think is 83 so if I undo this bit and this bit cast off, I should have 83 stitches. And if I've got 83 stitches, then I know my math is going to work. Oh, my God. Oh, this jumper is literally it's the most complicated thing I've ever done. Loki is, quite frankly, no use to man nor beast. We started doing the math. He took himself off to bed. Mark has been very helpful, though, and he's just poured a very large glass of wine. So part of the blog... Share the pain. I will be back in a moment when I've undone the cast off. <sighs> okay, it's done. Well, it's back to where it needs to be. Um, that took me two episodes of The Crown. We've started rewatching The Crown. Obviously, topical things happening, all incredibly sad. Um, I dropped it. Uh, yeah, so we just watched two episodes of The Crown and I have undone the cast off. But the mo the problem I found, which is why it took a bit of... A, it probably shouldn't have taken me an hour and a half to do that. But because of all the intarsia, like usually if it was just one constant colour, you'd undo the cast on, but you could see the working yarn so you'd know where to ungo, uh, where to ungo, where to unpick to. But because every bit of the pattern is its own different thread... You've got to try and work out where the live stitch was. And uh, it was just, it was a bit of a pain, but I got there. Um, sorry, finger on the screen. Don't have my tripod. So that is done. So it is now 10 to 6. We're going to take the dog for a W-A-L-K. I can't say the word because you'll go mental. Um, but it's done. I've got it back to where it was mid-afternoon. So I've still done all the knitting. That's the most important bit. All the knitting is done. I now just need to do the cast off. So the cast off itself will take me probably about half an hour to do 
the two butts and the middle. And I think Mark and I have worked at the maths. So I will double check that, but I think that'll be tomorrow's task. Although it's Sunday tomorrow. Um, I've got a errand to run first thing in the morning and then we are babysitting uh, niece two and nephew one Sunday into Monday because uh, my brother's gone to Madrid for my sister-in-law's birthday. So we are babysitting. So I might get it done tomorrow, but this video is very nearly there. I'm hoping that you're going to see the cast off and then a little bit of sewing in and then we're back for the wrap up. So nearly there, but I hope you've enjoyed a bit of mild peril. Like maybe this is a PG. Oh my God, honesty. <sighs> this is the most complex thing I've ever made and I'm weirdly secretly enjoying it. It's complicated, but I'm learning lots. I've never adapted a pattern before. I've never shrunk it down. Hey ho. Um, we are going to go and take him for a walk. He's gone into another room. Um, take him for a walk and then I think we're going to go for a curry. So no more knitting tonight. There we are. But I've got back to where I need to do, which is the most important. And when you see it next, you should hopefully see it cast off unless you now see me going, oh my God, something else has gone wrong. So stay tuned. Right, a week has passed since you just saw the travesty. <laughs> um, but it's off the needles. And I've got Mark's other jumper as a comparison. And it fits. I'll spin you around and show you in a minute. I've got fur wool, furry wool in my mouth. Um, but before I do the final reveal and wrap this video up, I'm going to sew in a couple of ends. I know, right? Just so that I can show you how pretty the reverse of Intarja is. I really love it. Um, so just to wrap this video up, I'm gonna go and sew a couple of ends in now. It's Sunday morning, Mark's still in bed, although he's awake, which is why I'm now filming, talking normal. Um, so I've fixed the numbers. Um, I said, I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna spend a little half an hour sewing in a couple of ends just to show you one of the pattern repeats and what it will look like when I finished all the ends. Um, and then we're gonna nip up and see uh, nieces one and four, and then probably head into the city center. So I need to edit this at some point if I wanna get this up tomorrow, Monday. Um, so I'm just gonna go and do my ends and I'll be back in a bit. Okay, I'm sitting down to do the wrap up. Um, say hi. Hi. <laughs> Mark is cooking uh, a roast chicken. So if you hear noises, I have told him to keep the noise to a minimum, but you know, in fairness, he said, well, do you want dinner or not? And I do absolutely want a roast chicken. So we're just gonna have to put up with a little bit of background noise. Nothing like a bit of violent chopping. No, nothing like a bit of violent chopping. I say, I'm gonna repeat if you do say anything because I'm not sure if the camera will pick you up. I need to get him like a roving mic, don't I? That would be, oh no, right. No, we're not doing that. Um, right, it is now finished. And I looked back through the footage and I started this video in June. Ah, <laughs> oh, right, and I know this jumper is my nemesis and we will get there, but I hope that you've enjoyed seeing the updated progress. And basically, June, July, or it's taken me nearly three months to do this much. What? Don't we know it? Don't we know it? How rude. So it's taken me three months from this bear to there. Now, I do fully appreciate that is an awful long time, but I haven't actually worked on this that much, have I? No. And I've made a couple of mistakes, as you've seen. We've had some mild peril in this video. Um, but it's kind of one of those now. It's just, it's going to be worth it. And I do love it. It's And when I knit on it, I'm like, oh, it's not actually as hard as you think it is. I just need to remind myself to get going on it. But basically, here it is, it's done. So, shoulder shaping and the neckline. Um, down to the arms. Excuse the ends, there are lots of ends still. I've sewn in a couple to show you. Uh, down to the arms and then down to the body. So, the back is finished. Oh, this could be the thumbnail. That'd be the thumbnail maybe, yeah. Um, so the back is finished. And honestly, it's the best thing I've ever knit. 
hands down. I know I grump about it, but it is the best thing I've ever knit. I'm so, so proud of it. Almost to the point that I did have this thought earlier. Oh, I've not told you this. Um, I might not knit the front and you'll just never have it. And I might just put it in a frame and put it on the wall. That sounds about right. That sounds about right. You, you, you'd get that a lot quicker, a bit of, bit of wall art than a completed jumper. Um, but yeah, there we go, it's finished. So I said I would quickly just sew in some ends because I do think the back of Intage is very pretty. So obviously we have the nest and you can kind of see the reverse pattern, but if I just hold this up, so I've sewn in, obviously, as you can see, there are no ends here. I've sewn in this portion and it's just almost the reverse of the, the pattern. And I really do like it. And some of these ends will um, obviously felt in, I did say to him, maybe I won't sew any of them in and it'd be like an extra warmth layer. He wasn't down with that either. Um, I wonder why. The only ones I haven't sewn in yet and I'm probably not gonna do them yet are these ones going around the very edge. Because what I will probably do is I will sew the garment up completely because a lot of these ends, because I'll um, mattress stitch it, um, I'll have a ridge on the inside of the seam, which you will get to see when the jumper is finished. But a lot of these ends I can hide in the seam. So rather than trying to sew lots of ends in now, because there's a lot of ends obviously at the beginning of the ends of each row. Um, so rather than sewing these in, I'm going to hide these, some of them in the seams anyway. So what I'll, I will do is I've committed to doing 15 minutes a day. <laughs> yeah, right. I can hear you all saying I'm going to do 15 minutes a day of sewing in the ends and I'll sew all the inner ends in a bit like a puzzle where there's a puzzle. You start with the outside and then you do the middle. I'm going to start with the middle and then get to the outside. But yeah, it's really pretty. I, I do like it. Um, and that's it. So that's the end of this video. I've looked back and I've, it's a longer video than I was expecting it to be, but we have had some drama, which I quite like the fact that I've been blogging about it because you now get to experience the drama. <laughs> but I hope that you found this entertaining, um, but also a little bit educational. Like this is the first time I've ever taken a pattern and tried to customize it. And of course you start with less stitches. You're going to have less at the end so you can't follow the cast off uh i hear you all saying but i didn't think of that and if i've learned and caused an error and had to undo some work and it stops you having to do that if you ever try to customize something in the future then this video has been educational and that's all i can ask for so i'm going to wrap this video up and get it up um i love a, a monday video so this will be monday if you're watching this now live um not long after it's been up um coming up on the channel i'm going to be going live again on youtube with irena as part of the mystery knit along um next weekend not sure the date and the time yet need to speak to irena and confirm that but we'll, there'll be another youtube live for all of you west knits mystery knit alongers my kit has arrived, a sneak peek. This isn't a West Knits video. Um, so yeah, very excited about that. And then there'll be my usual monthly wrap up um, and then we'll get into the Vlogtober Madness. So please give this video a like, a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. And if you are here and you don't subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of the content that I've got coming up. It's gonna be a busy, three months to the end of the year, October, November, December, and I'm super excited. And I've already started making plans for videos into next year, which they're really exciting as well. And I don't know if you're one of those people going, oh, I can't tell you. But then it's like, I've put some emails out to people about um, content, going to visit some farms, um, some collaborations, loads of fun things that I think you will all enjoy. Um, so yeah, plenty coming up so stay tuned so thank you from me and mark's jumper i hope that you've enjoyed this was meant to be a podette behind the scenes but we've had some drama we've had some intrigue um and before the end of the month i'm going to cast on for the ribbon for the front and try and start it so check back in a week's time on my monthly wrap up and see if I've managed to get the front started um so I'm going to leave it there thank you very much as always for being here I really do appreciate you all um let me know what you think of this video in the comments below and until we speak again happy crafting